Welcome back, this is News Extra. Now tonight, Norfolk's rather well known now as being pretty good at hosting cycle events. It was one of the first parts of the country to really embrace the Tour of Britain, for example, and now it does have its very own cycle event, the Tour de Norfolk. It benefits the Big C Cancer Charity, last year raising £20,000. I'm joined tonight by Dan Bell, the charity's fundraising and events manager. Good evening, Dan. Good evening. Now last year, this was your biggest event of the year, yes, biggest yeah. financially. Yeah. How successful um, was it? It, I was, it? We were blown away, to be honest. It was the inaugural year, so um, we were approached by the organisers in February and March time to get involved. Really excited to be, to be involved, but obviously the first year we were, I think we were all unsure how well it would perform, and certainly for us it was, it was fantastic. We had a lot of support from uh, new cyclists uh, who fundraised you know, excellent levels, and yeah, it exceeded 20 grand, which is, for us, for a single event, it, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, our highest fundraising effort of last year. Because when you're starting up a new event, something from the ground up, how, yep. how tough is that to actually get something that you hope will become a, an annual event, a, a fixture in the calendar? Yeah, it was, it's, I think it's particularly difficult for the organisers as well because you're starting from scratch, so if there's no customer data to begin with on year one. Um, you know, they're using the Norfolk Showground, which is a phenomenal venue, but for the first time, so you're building relationships with, um, with, yeah, with new suppliers and new venues for the first time. Um, but obviously, for future years, so uh, this coming year, it's going to be so much easier because we we can see what worked in 2016, but also areas of development which th we've already started to plan for 2017. Because when you're actually, you know, at the showground at the start of the the event on 2016, yep. and you're, uh, uh, you know, there are certain number of people are going to be involved, yeah. but were you actually surprised how many actually got involved? In yeah, uh, a participants. I mean, originally we were. Certainly Big C we were hopeful for sort of 500 to 800 and the event sold out a couple of weeks before the event. I think they got to 1300 um, pre-advance and plus on the day. And then even on the day of the event, you were thinking, oh, you know, it's a Sunday morning. Some people are going to sort of stroll in at sort of 8, 9, 10 o'clock. People were there 6 a.m. ready to go. Um, yeah, we we're kind of really blown away by people's enthusiasm, um, especially the start of the day. It was a bit drizzly as well. It brightened up later on, but they were out there in the, in the rain ready to go. Now the launch for 2017 is, is now happening yep. to try and get people on board. What are the main things you learnt from 2016 that you're taking into 2017? I think um, A, the showground was a great place to start, so it was easy for everyone to get to. There was plenty of parking, there was good facilities there. Um, there's a lot of space there as well, so they, they, the organisers really wanted to have a, like a race village that would have mechanical support, uh, food and drinks, outlets, just a lot of places for people to relax either pre or, or post the cycle. Um, we'll let people make more of a day of it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and they wanted to make it quite um, sort of family friendly as well. So certainly one of the, the big learnings that they've made for 2017 is they're going to do a one kilometre cycle route within the showground. So it's very family friendly and that would be for free as well. Um, obviously, f parents are going to be cautious about getting youngsters on, on the road. So the beauty of doing it in the showground is there's no traffic and it's all on tarmac. So it's a good intro to get on your bike. And uh, what are the other main things that are being introduced for 2017 that are, that are new? They've, they've slightly restructured the, the mileage. So uh, this year they've got a 20, a 14, a 70 and a 100 mile um, circuits. I think the theory is they want the event to be completely in, um, inclusive. So for your diehard cyclists who can knock out a 100 mile route, which sounds very difficult to me, um, that's there for them and they're going all the way up up to Wells and Blakeney, so a big loop. But for the more beginner or intermediate cycl cyclists out there, there's a 20 and a 40 mile loop. So that's still a nice distance to, to, to exercise, but it's not you know, the, uh, the all day cyclist for, the, the, for those elite of a cyclists out there. Because why was the decision made to, to change the route this year? Because this year it's much more into North Norfolk rather than going sort of more to the west, I yeah. suppose. Um, so Tour de Norfolk is basically um, hopeful to be a five-year um, event, so obviously this being the second year. Um, the theory behind that is the organisers have said that over the five years the route's going to change each time. So as you said, in 2016 it was a bit more west. This one's heading much more towards uh, North Norfolk coast, which is sort of my favourite part of the county. Um, over the five years then you would essentially have done um, most of Norfolk. So I think, yeah, there's, there's actually, a, I think they're going to work on a, a medal or a prize for people who've done all five years to say you've essentially cycled all of Norfolk's greatest routes. Because it does take in some really good parts of the county. Do you yeah. hope that not only attracts people who 
are, are from Norfolk, but maybe some people outside of the county yeah. widen the appeal. Absolutely. I mean, North, Norfolk is a great county for cyclists. As you know, it's relatively flat, although a little bit hilly uh, up towards North Norfolk. So it's really showcasing the best our county has to offer. I know this year the organisers have worked very hard with other partners. So I know uh, Dinosaur Park is, is a good example. So just to try and get other tourists attractions in Norfolk on board to showcase the best our county has to offer. Now when those routes are being put together, is that done in consultation with cyclists? How do they get, get picked or is it really just trying to pick some of the best areas? I think from what I've got the understanding from the, uh, the organisers themselves, the concept of Tour de Norfolk was very much they wanted to put an event on for cyclists that cyclists would appreciate. They, all the guys that have set up the event are very keen cyclists themselves and so they've obviously been to very sportive, some good and some bad. And I think they were very much, they knew what the cyclists would want from something in the goodie bags that was going to really work for them and fuel them to, to good um, maps and routes in advance to, uh, yeah, just the, the inf information they get in advance. So a lot of thought has been planned about what a cyclist would need to enjoy a day out. And when it came to the feedback from 2016, uh, yeah, as you said, we had there were, there were hundreds of people involved. Yeah. But what, what were people saying about it? They, did they enjoy it? Were there things they wanted changed? Was, was it very positive? Yeah, I mean, there obviously there have been some tweaks um, in terms of, particularly on the day in terms of the registration that the organisers have improved. But generally, the feedback was very positive. If you go on the, the website, so it's uh, www.tordonoffit.co.uk, that's where you can sign up. But also there's a lot of testimonials on the website, all, uh, all very glowing. Um, and most of them are saying you, you anticipated exactly what we wanted. So when we got to the feed station, there was actual drink and food that were, were going to give us energy and substance rather than you know, a can of Coke. Um, also, the, 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 the routes in particular and the signage. So um, when you're going to do your circuit, they, you could always find where you were going. So it's actually navigating the route was quite, um, quite easy, but obviously a very important part of the day. And when it comes to 2017, the, the launch has happened, but w what sign-ups been like? Have there been people already getting on board? Yeah, really promising. Uh, we already had um, 30 sign-ups already on the night of us doing the, the, the press release, which is great. Uh, There's a comical uh, press shoot in Norfolk Showground in the snow uh, of, of last week. Um, but yeah, the sign-ups have already been on track. We also opened the event about three months earlier than we had in 2016, so we're hopeful for up to 1,800 cyclists this year. And when it comes to the actual amount being raised, £20,000 was a, a good oh, chunk normal. last year. You're not yeah. going to complain about that, but is, is the target to, to try and push that a little bit higher? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've worked on the organisers uh, again in terms of how we can make sure that um, anyone par participating in the event has the option to, to, um, to fundraise for Big C. Obviously, it's not mandatory, um, but anyone who is keen, uh, we're there to incentivise them and also to give them some information about what the charity does. So for us, it's a very good showcase event to talk to the local community about us being their local cancer charity and how their involvement can help us. Because that, I guess that's important, everyone's turning up for a family day, enjoying themselves, getting on their bikes, yep. but also connecting that to what the money's actually going to go yep. towards, because £20,000 for example can do a tremendous amount of good. Yeah, absolutely. So um, part of Big C's dialogue this year with the local community is what those donations mean to the charity. So. Um, we have plans uh, underway to open another community centre um, within Norfolk, probably in the Norwich region, for anybody who does have that unfortunate diagnosis they can go to. Um, we're also um, opening up a sort of a weekend service, um, a virtual service, so a, f a phone line and, and an internet, because obviously our centres are not always open at the weekend, certainly not on a Sunday. Um, so it's giving um, some comprehension to those donors about what the money means to us and where it's going to go to. So I guess an awful lot of people would maybe pass the Big C Centre if they're going to and from the hospital, for yep. example, might not necessarily know what goes on inside, yep. that kind of thing. So it's maybe putting those those things Join together in, a, in an area that they can understand. Yeah, and it's also making people aware that we are, I mean, the, the Norwich Centre by the hospital is the, is the most, uh, it's the longest serving one, it's the most well known, but we do have community centres in uh, Kings Lynn, Gorston and Yarmouth. There's plans for North Norfolk and, as I said, that they're sort of virtual weekend service as well. So it's making sure that people in you know, all areas of Norfolk know that there's you know, Big C is there to help should they, should they need it. Well, Dan, thank you very much indeed. And that is all the time we have for this evening. As ever, you can always join the conversation on Twitter. We're at Mustard TV. Just use the usual hashtag News Extra. And if you do want to know more about the event or maybe sign up, all the details are on your screen now. But my thanks to Dan for his time this evening and to you for watching. Have a very good night.
you stop speaking at just the right time.